The game of life is like a game of poker. And who would have known that some of the best advice for life would be found inside a song about playing poker? A song everyone knows by heart and a song that changed the fortune of a computer operator working a graveyard shift and elevated a middle-aged singer into superstardom. The making of a storybook song that grabbed an indelible piece of pop culture and a tune that has transcended time, genre, and generation, including an interview with the legendary singer himself, is coming up next on Professor of Rock. Hey, music junkies. Professor of Rock, always here to celebrate the greatest artists and the greatest songs of all time. You know, if you remember back in the day when there were only three TV channels to choose from, not including PBS, you'll dig this channel of deep musical nostalgia. Make sure to subscribe below right now. Click the bell so you always know when our videos come out. I know you're going to dig this channel. It's a time machine every single day. How do we survive with just three TV channels? <laughs> also, take a look at our Patreon where we have full interviews up there. And our merch below helps us keep it a daily channel. So whether you've ever played poker or not, you've no doubt applied a poker idiom to some situation in your everyday life. The ace in the hole, a card up your sleeve, it's not in the cards, sweeten the pot, up the ante, you know, these are just a few of the many gambling expressions that are used in our daily vernacular. Uh, but the poker phrase that grabbed an indelible piece in pop culture was, you gotta know when to hold them, and no one to fold them. Of course, immortalized in Kenny Rogers 1978 multi-format landmark, The Gambler. I met up with The Gambler. We were both too tired to sleep. It's our latest entry into the new standards where we celebrate a song that transcends everything and, you know, stands the test of time to uh, cross generations. And even today, we have an interview with the man himself. It's coming up. It's one of those songs that everybody loves. It's just a standard. Even if you don't like country music, it's not really a country song even. That's why it's a new standard. It transcends all, and it's a song that we've all sung at one point or another. And uh, I love this story. The Gambler, it was written in 1976 by an unknown songwriter from North Carolina. His name, Don Schlitz. The inspiration came to Don during a stroll back home from a guitar session on the famed music row in Nashville, Tennessee. Schlitz wrote most of the song in his head. Uh, it was during that 20-minute jaunt, including the iconic chorus, but he had no idea what triggered it. The idea just seemed to come out of nowhere. But Don believes that it was a gift from the spirit of his late father, who had just recently passed away. Uh, Don called his father the best man I've ever known. During an interview for American Top 40 with Casey Kasem, Schlitz said that after he typed out much of the song's lyrics, it took him another six weeks to settle on an ending that completed The Gambler. If you miss one word at the end, you don't realize what happens to the old gambler on the train. He actually called the conclusion of his narrative his Guy da Maupassant ending. Maupassant uh, was a 19th century French author that Schlitz really admired. He was largely regarded as the father of uh, the modern short story. And you know, if you think about it, what happens at the end of The Gambler, it's a bit of a mystery. The last line in verse four of The Gambler leaves the listener hanging as Maupassant had uh, a penchant to do in his own novellas. And in his final words, I found an ace that I could keep. I mean, did the old drifting gambler die? We're not really sure. However, his wisdom, it lives eternal. But in his final words, I found an ace that I could keep. Although Schlitz felt he had written an interesting story when the gambler was presented as a song for licensing, it appeared to be a throwaway, as is the story with a lot of these songs. Uh, Don dropped out of Duke University and he moved to Nashville to be a songwriter. But until he got his lucky break in that profession, Don took a more practical job as a computer operator at nearby Vanderbilt University. Uh, he worked the dreaded graveyard shift. Schlitz spent a lot of time absorbing tutelage from his mentor, songwriter Bob McDill, who penned songs for Don Williams, Waylon Jennings, Ann Murray, uh, and many others. Years later, McDill became one of Nashville's most sought-after lyricists. He scored hits for Dan Seals, Keith Whitley, Sammy Kershaw, and Alabama. Oh, what a feeling it must be love. Don's divine impulse for the gambler, that came to him when he was walking home from McDill's office on Music Row, as I said. For two years, a Schlitz shopped the gambler to no avail. Until 
Shel Silverstein convinced his client, singer Bobby Bear, to record the song. On summer's evening, on a train bound for nowhere. Bear's interpretation of The Gambler was not released as a single, so Schlitz opted to record it himself. But when he put out his recording as a single, it flopped to number 65 on the Billboard Country chart. I met up with a gambler. We were both too tired to sleep. The Gambler then caught the interest of Larry Butler, God rest his soul, uh, who was set to produce the 1978 LP Gone Girl for Johnny Cash. Uh, Cash was going through a very difficult period during that time. He was distracted during the recording sessions for Gone Girl because of his uh, heavy drug and alcohol abuse. Cash cut a version of The Gambler that was included on the album, but a lot of people called it a lackluster track. It sounded like the man in black was merely you know, going through the motions because he disliked the song and he begrudgingly sang it, and you can tell. Butler and Cash argued about the song which Cash eventually delivered, like I said, a dull, monotonous performance. Because every gambler knows that the secret to survival. It was strike three for the gambler, until another pitch was fortunately thrown to Kenny Rogers. Now, Kenny Rogers was riding high on his top five crossover hit Lucille and three number one country singles in the span of about 14 months. Even though he was on a hot streak, Kenny was 40 years old in 78 and some spiteful pundits in the music industry predicted that Kenny was on his way out. You know, his best days were behind him. <laughs> Boy, were they wrong. Won't you believe in my soul? In addition to working with Johnny Cash in 78, Butler was also hired to produce a record for Kenny Rogers. As we know, Butler was a big fan of The Gambler, and in spite of his ordeal with Johnny, he believed in this song. Truth be told, before Kenny decided to record The Gambler, uh, he actually brought it to his friend Willie Nelson. And he asked him if he wanted to record it. But you know, Willie Nelson was already deep in material for his Stardust album, and he turned it down. Now, one of the main reasons that you know, Willie Nelson turned it down is because he was constantly playing the song Red-Headed Stranger in concert. Very much like The Gambler, it was a long, exhaustive song to sing for him. He wasn't keen on the idea of recording a similar song to that one. Joe from Blue Rock, Montana. Road into town. When asked if he regretted the decision to pass on The Gambler, which he was asked a, a couple times in his career, Willie Nelson was very clear. No, it was Kenny's song all the way. Train bound for nowhere, met up with the gambler. Now, after Willie Nelson declined, Kenny was all in to make the definitive version of The Gambler. Butler was thrilled because he, he finally had an enthusiastic star to collaborate with on a tune that he thought had a, a lot of great potential. So Kenny brought in Dottie West, one of his favorite singers, and the Jordanaires uh, to perform backup vocals on the track. They also sang for Elvis. Now, as we continue to break down this song, I do want to thank our sponsor, Zenny I wear the glasses I'm always wearing. If you're searching for progressives, Zenny has you covered. See both near and far in one seamless lens. Click on the info button right up here to get 80% off regular retail prices. You're gonna love it, check it out. We were both too tired to sleep, so we took turns staring. So Larry Butler created a guitar intro that was a, a lot different than the original beginning that Don Schlitz had laid down. Um, the new guitar line, it was definitely executed by the late, great Jimmy Capps, one of the uh, group of session players known as the Nashville A-Team. Uh, the lead in chord structure perfectly set the tone for Kenny's riveting storytelling. On a warm summer's eve. I mean, everybody knows when Kenny Rogers focused on his storytelling vocal style, his solo career, it exploded. Lucille was very much a story song, and The Gambler would prove to be quintessential for Kenny's technique, you know, the powerfully resonate with a mass audience like a, a good old campfire tell. Kenny Rogers had this really unique ability to weave compelling narratives into his music. I mean, his songs were often heartfelt tales of love and loss and, and emotional life experiences. His talent for bringing characters and stories to life throughout his, his music, it generated immense worldwide popularity and a solidified and enduring legacy as one of the most influential crossover artists of the entire rock era. Uh, he just had a way, and his voice, so distinct. Nobody could sing like Kenny Rogers. It's just one of those voices that you knew exactly who it was when you heard him sing. Everyone considered him a coward of the county. Oh. 
The Gambler became the title track for Kenny's number six studio album and uh, was released as the debut single from that record. The song was a smash. It went to number one on the country chart, went to number three on the AC charts, number two in Canada, and it went to number 16 on the Billboard Hot 100 crossover. It was named the CMA Song of the Year and Country Song of the Year at the Grammy Awards in 79. Kenny also won the Grammy Award for Best Male Country Vocal Performance for The Gambler in that same year. The Gambler LP went on to be the biggest record of Kenny's illustrious career. It sold over 6 million copies in America and over 30 million around the world. And she in me. Calling The Gambler a pop culture phenomenon is quite honestly an understatement. It's more of a cultural institution. The song inspired an Emmy Award-winning series of Western-style made-for-TV movies that were based on the song's storyline. You gotta remember those if you're a child of the 70s and 80s. Kenny played the lead role as Brady Hawks, star of the series. Gambler in 1980, succeeded by Kenny Rogers as The Gambler, The Adventure Continues in 83. Kenny Rogers as The Gambler Part 3. The Legend Continues in 87. The Gambler Returns to Luck of the Draw in 91. And then there was the final installment in 94, Gambler 5, playing for keeps. If I win, we start over as friends. In sports, the Houston Gamblers of the USFL, based in Kenny's hometown, they were named after the song. MLB pitcher Kenny Rogers, he was nicknamed the Gambler for obvious reasons. Uh, the track is actually the unofficial anthem for the Edinburgh University Men's Hockey Club and professional U.S. darts player Danny Baggish is also nicknamed The Gambler, and he uses the song for his walk-in music. <laughs> I didn't know there was such a thing as pro darting. Maybe throwing darts at a dartboard wasn't such a waste of time after all. <laughs> Danny In addition to the five TV movie specials, The Gambler has been a constant fixture on television for well over 40 years. It's one of Hank Hill's favorite songs on the animated comedy, King of the Hill. Got to know when to hold them, know when to fold them. Kevin led a bus riding sing-along in an episode of The Office. When to hold them, know when to fold them. I mean, The Gambler was the punchline for a popular Geico commercial that premiered in 2014 with Kenny playing cards with some guys while singing the song's famous chorus. You never count your money when you're sitting at the table. What? And if you've ever spent any time in a casino, you've undoubtedly seen or lost money playing The Gambler slot machine. It's everywhere. You get to play Kenny Rogers' Gambler bonus. The massive success of The Gambler, that earned songwriting stripes for John Schlitz. He was actually able to quit his job as a computer operator with that horrible work schedule and transcend it into one of the most sought after writers in Music City. Schlitz went on to write, get it, 24 number one hits, including the classics Forever and Ever Amen by Randy Travis. Forever and Ever Amen. And When You Say Nothing at All by Keith Whitley. You know, later covered by Alison Krauss. When you say nothing at all. Smile on your face, lets me know that you need me. So President George H.W. Bush actually commissioned Don Schlitz to write a theme song for his Points of Light program. I didn't realize that uh, that had a theme song to it. Remember that? Thousand Points of Light, not Ganda. That Dana Carvey impersonation, I remember when he said that on Saturday Night Live. Sorry, I, I just got lost in uh, some nostalgia there. The behind us, not like Vietnam, and this time our strike will be swift and deadly. He also composed the score for the musical The Adventures of Tom Sawyer. Sawyer we an awful gem. Hey, we've all been captured. Don Schlitz was inducted into the Country Music Hall of Fame uh, in 2017. Still alive and well, living in Tennessee. Uh, fellow Hall of Famer, the iconic Kenny Rogers, uh, he passed away in 2020 at the age of 81. Kenny's achievements would take hours to document, but perhaps the accolade that best sums up his 60-year career 
is when Kenny was voted favorite singer of all time in a joint readers poll conducted by USA Today and People magazine in 1986. He's the ultimate crossover artist. Uh, the legend of the gambler, it's extraordinary. The song is an American pop standard, like I said, and the story celebrated American folklore. And it all started with uh, that walk back home from Music Row, something Don Schlitz has done dozens of times before. Both Don Schlitz and Kenny Rogers told the world that The Gambler was not a song about the dynamics of poker. Uh, as the author of the song, Schlitz explained that The Gambler is really about handling what life gives you, what some might call playing the hand you're dealt. Or as Don's lyrics go in verse three, you gotta learn to play it right. Said if you're gonna play the game, boy, you gotta learn to play it right. Now Don has maintained he wrote the song to honor his father. It was a cathartic way to deal with his father's death. You know, that happened just a few months before that hot afternoon when he was struck with the inspiration for the gambler. Now, just to be clear, his dad wasn't a gambler, but he was the person that taught him life's great lessons. He was also the person that you know, gave him his first Corona typewriter to help him with his quest to be a songwriter. Now, to that end, Don and Kenny, they weren't gamblers either, at least in the gaming world. Kenny, who was always good for a memorable quip during an interview, said he learned a long time ago, I can't win enough money to excite me, but I can't lose enough money to depress me, so I don't gamble. You got to know when to hold, know when to fold. For Kenny, the gambler, it was much more than a song about a drifting gambler giving advice to an impressionable apprentice on a train. It was a metaphor for life that was a career-identifying composition. So here's an interview that I did with Kenny um, about the song and about his career just before he passed away. You got to know when to hold up, know when to fold. I've always felt that, that country music is the white man's rhythm and blues. It's where all the heart, the pain is. So I, I and I, I love storytelling because rather than just say a bunch of words that sound pretty together so the gambler is a song that 500 years from now people will still be singing along to it's very rare of an artist that can write or interpret a song becomes their own and the whole world is singing along with them every word 50 years later you know and I, you've done it many times over i was in morocco six months ago uh -huh. i didn't even know they spoke english there they knew every word to the game yeah. and sang it absolutely which was pretty cool i thought i think the uh the Irish Soccer League yeah. at one time, their soccer team, uh -huh. that was their theme song. You got to know when to hold them, know when to fold them. Come on, Matt, get them going. In pop culture, it's been a touchstone. I mean, you performed on The Muppet Show. There'll be time to love look out when the deal is done. I remember seeing yeah. that album, The Chipmunks, as a kid watching Saturday morning cartoons. Rock Band has been yeah. on, it's been a rock band. Wyclef Jean used you in, right. in his song. You performed it with Fish at Bonnaroo the other uh, few years ago. Um, please give a warm welcome to Kenny Rogers. And Hank Hill is his favorite song. Play the gambler. You've got to know when to hold them. I mean, it's been all over pop culture, and of course, she did the TV shows. Yeah. What? Uh, tell me about the gambler. How that came about. Uh, Don Schlitz, of course, wrote it, yes. and he's the most amazing writer. And I say this in the show, he, he's the best at taking a moment in my life or a moment in your life and putting it to music so that everyone can relate to it. But he wrote The Gambler, and I think it was one of the first things he had ever written. And he, he presented it to me, and I think Johnny Cash recorded it the same right. day I recorded it. 78, yeah. But it was just one of those things that just took off, and I think I was coming off of like Lucille or something, so yeah. I had a bit of an advantage. But it was it was a song that I think, as I said, country music starts you off and tells you where you are in a bar in Toledo or on a train bound for nowhere. It's, okay, here's where you are. So you get a, right. a mindset. Then they take you on this journey and let you off with an emotion. You know, and I think that that's one of the great things about country music. Hey, thanks so much for watching. Leave us a comment about Kenny Rogers and Don Schlitz and this classic song. What are your memories of this song? 
Let us know in the comments below. I just love, uh, love this story, such a great one. If you like our content, we invite you to subscribe below. We would love to have you as part of our community. Until next time, three chords and the truth, my friends.